Well, today we're going to um, spend our last week in No Zeros, the sermon series No Zeros. We're in John chapter 15, and so far we've looked at a few different things, but I want to start just by our guiding um, theme of this series. And, and so the, the theme of this series is this, that all, say all, all, let's do it again, say all, all followers of Christ are meant to bear fruit. All of us, every single one of us is meant to bear fruit for the kingdom. There is not a person who is a follower of Christ that is meant to sit around where, while everyone else builds the kingdom. Every single one of us is meant to bear fruit. And so that's the idea of no zeros. There should be nobody that's just sitting around doing nothing. Every single one of us should be connected to Christ and should be growing in our faith, in our character, in our conduct, and today we're going to talk about in conversion. And so I want to go back to the last few weeks. I've given you some homework assignments. So the first week, your homework assignment, and, and listen, I want you to remember these because these are things you should continue to do. Even though I gave you a new assignment every week, I promise I don't give homework every week. I want you to keep doing these things. These are things are too important for us. So the first thing was this, to find the thing that draws you closest to God and to do that on a daily basis, whether that's listening to sermons or doing, uh, you know, praising God in your home or reading scripture or just finding a quiet place and praying, find the thing that draws you closer to God and do that daily. So the first week we talked about being connected. The reason that's important is that the most important thing we can do as followers of Christ is to know Jesus Christ and be connected to him. We serve a God that wants a relationship. We're going to see that today, a relationship with us and wants to continue to, for us to know him deeper and grow in our relationship. So that was the first week was being connected. There's four C's. The second C was the fruit of character that as we stay connected to the vine, that we should grow in character. We should be more peaceful. We should be more loving. We should be more kind. We should be more gentle. And on down the list, we should be growing in our character as followers of Christ. And so the second week, your homework was to focus on how God was growing you in your area of character through the fruits of the Spirit. The third C was conduct. And, and this really boils down to the word love. We as followers of Christ are to grow in our love for each other. So we shouldn't love people the same way that we did a year ago or six months ago. We should be growing as we're connected to him. As we grow in character, we grow in the way that we love each other. And then the fourth one, today we're talking about the C, conversion. And so I want to ask you a simple question. I'll ask you this again later, but, but I want to ask you a question because fruit is not meant to be just for us. The fruit that God produces in us is meant to be used for the kingdom. So here's what I want to ask you. How does your faith impact the people around you? Let me ask it in a different way. Does your faith in Jesus Christ matter to anyone other than you? Because I think a lot of times we think about our faith and our character and our love and we think about all of that, but are we really making a difference for the kingdom? God doesn't want to just produce fruit in us, but God wants to use the fruit that's produced in us to build the kingdom. So today we're talking about conversion. Why don't you stand with me? We're in John chapter 15. I'm going to read this and you can follow along and listen, I one of the reasons we stand, I know that you stand and sit a lot, and I know some of you don't love that, but one of the reasons we stand for God's word is because we believe God speaks through his word. I have read this text hundreds or thousands of times in my life. And this morning, as I studied my notes for the sermon, God spoke to me through his word. So we stand because we believe God wants to speak to us today through his word. So you can follow along on the screen with me. Some of this is going to be recap from the last few weeks, but then we're going to get into verse 15 through 17, which is where we're going to stay this week. John 15 verse 1 says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. 
Now remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. Then we get into verse 15 through 17, and this is where we're going to focus today. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know the master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so what, that whatever you ask in my name, the father will give you. This is my command, love each other. You can have a seat. So there's two big things I want to talk about today. We've talked about being connected to the vine. We've talked about growing in character. We've talked about growing in conduct or love for each other. Today, I want to talk about our role in the kingdom, what it is we are called to do and how that, that affects the way we live. So our role in the kingdom and what that means for us. We'll start in verse 15. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything I learned from the Father, I have made known to you. Jesus starts by drawing two pictures. There's the servant relationship, and then there's friendship. There's being a friend. And Jesus says, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. Now, let's, let's talk about how this works. What would a servant relationship with Christ look like? I think you can see it if you, if you look around the church, and I'm not trying to be critical or judgmental, but I think sometimes we fall into a servant relationship. We think, hey, if I behave a certain way, it's, it's transactional. If I do what God tells me, if I do the right things, if I behave, if I show up to church, then God will bless me and God will love me and I will get my ticket punched to heaven. And a lot of Christians live like servants that are just trying to check the boxes to get to heaven. That's servanthood. Jesus says, I don't call you servants. I call you friends. Now, what does friendship look like? Friendship is knowing. Friendship is sharing life. Listen, Christianity, following Christ, is not about checking boxes and behaving well. It's not about getting your ticket punched. Jesus wants to invite you into a friendship to know him deeper, to partner with him. Jesus looks at his disciples who have been following him for, for several years, about around three years. And he says, I no longer call you servants. You're not just here to do what I tell you. You are here as a friend, someone that joins with me and partners in ministry. I was thinking about this um, in, in, when I was in college. I had professors and we had a servant relationship, a teacher-servant relationship. They gave me work to do. I did my work. If I did my work well, I would get good grades. They would give me tests. I would do my best. I would get, it was this relationship where it was them teaching me and I had to do what I had to do to get what I needed. And if I didn't, I failed and that was over. And so I remember that very well, going to class, listening to lectures, filling out papers. But, but something happened after I graduated had the opportunity to go back to school um, just to visit a couple times down at Treveca where I went to college. 
And I had the opportunity to sit with some of my professors, not in a classroom, not as a servant, not as a student, but to sit with my professors. And you know what was, it was a totally different relationship because before, I was just there doing my work, and, and I know they cared about me, and I know they wanted the best for me, but it was about me doing what they asked me to do to get a grade, and now it's I'm meeting with them, and we're talking about life and ministry, and we are partners in ministry. Jesus calls us into a relationship, not a, a servanthood. Yes, we are to serve him, but Jesus calls us friends. We are no longer servants. We are friends. Listen to me. This is good news today. You are loved and adopted as a child of God. You are in the inner circle if you remain in him. How many of you have ever been in a group of people and you were not in the inner circle? Anyone? Oh, we got a bunch of cool kids in here. Everyone's in the... I was there a couple times where I had friend groups and I knew that I wasn't one of the inner circle, one of the main ones. I was just one of the ones hanging around, you know, just orbiting around their coolness, right? Listen, some of you have lived your whole lives and you've never felt accepted and loved. Today, I've got really good news for you. The God that created all of this loves you and adopts you as his child and brings you into the inner circle. You are not a servant. You're not just here to behave well. You are a child of God, loved, invited into a relationship. You are loved. And God wants to partner with you in the work of ministry. It's not just God's going to do his thing and you're going to sit here. See, sometimes we, we turn church into a spectator sport, don't we? Any of you ever been guilty of just being spectators? You come to church and it's like we treat it like a movie theater. I mean, sometimes we literally do. We don't even sing when they sing, right? Sometimes we come into church and we sit here and we watch what happens and we think, okay, God, I'm here. Go ahead and pour into me. And it's all this transaction and it's spectating. That's not what we're called to be as followers of Christ. We are called to be partners in his kingdom. We are here to worship him. We are here to give of ourselves to him. We're here to hear from him and we're here to grow to build his kingdom. There is no room for spectator worship in God's kingdom. Listen, I know that the temptation, because I do it occasionally, where I come in and I sit around and I think, well, that music was okay. The message probably not so good or this, and I like this, but I didn't like this, and it's all about me receiving something. That's not the relationship we are called into. We are called to be friends, to be partners in kingdom work. No zeros. What, what would it look like if every single one of us just really owned this? I mean, seriously, like what would it look like if our church, if every single one of us came here, not just to watch what happens, or to receive something. But if we came here all in to what he has for us, I think God would just blow the, the literally they're working on the roof, it might happen, but God would just blow the roof off. And, and God would do incredible things. We are not servants, we are Friends, see, this isn't just about behaving a certain way. It's not just about knowing the right things. It's not just about looking a certain way. And guess what? It's not even just about loving people the right way. God wants us to partner in building his kingdom. And sometimes we, we have a transactional relationship with God and then we get frustrated because we don't think we can hear or see what God's trying to do. When, when your faith is transactional, when you're a servant, you're not going to know the plan because God calls you into a relationship. And so God doesn't want to hide things from you. God wants to know you, wants you to know him and wants to partner with you, wants to reveal things. God's plan is not to hide it from us, but to reveal his kingdom. What I found is that when I'm all in, God is opening my eyes and my heart to see what he's doing 
Sometimes we act like God's this, and, and God is mysterious and great. But sometimes we act like God's hiding things from us. Most of the time when we feel like things are hidden, it's because we're not open and all in in our faith. God's plan is to build his kingdom through us. That's the plan. Jesus would lay down his life. We celebrated communion. He gave his life to, for our sins so that we could be justified and saved. But his plan, and in fact, I love this, in John chapter 15, when he gives all of this talk about remaining in him and bearing fruit, you know this is his last night with his disciples. This is his last night before he would be betrayed and eventually crucified. And so this is what he wanted them to get. He says, remain in me, stay connected to me, bear fruit. Why? Because we are God's plan to build the kingdom, to restore all things. Verse 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. I'll just spend a quick second. Sometimes we think that we have chosen him. And, and listen, you do have a choice in the matter. You can choose whether to follow Jesus or not. You can choose whether to come to church or not. You can choose whether to read the Bible and pray or not. But listen, none of us would be here if it wasn't for him choosing us first. Good news. You are invited into the inner circle and you are chosen by the creator God to be a part of his kingdom. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And why? I appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit so that you might go and bear fruit. Every single one of us is called to bear fruit. The word we repeated earlier, all followers of Christ are called to bear fruit. But there's, there's words here I, I don't want us to miss. Fruit that lasts. You're not just called to bear a little bit of fruit and then stop bearing fruit and look back. We've talked about this over the last few weeks that sometimes in the church, sometimes in following Christ, we look back to the good old days when there was fruit, we look back to the good old days when it was the way we liked it. We look back to the good old days when, when God did these cool things. That's not God's plan. Jesus says, I chose you and appointed you to bear fruit, fruit that will, anyone? Last. God's plan is not for his people or his church to look back at when he used to work in their lives. God's plan is to continue to bear fruit, fruit that will last, which brings us to that fourth C, conversion. And I asked you this question earlier, and I'll ask you again, does your faith matter to anyone other than you? Because I think there are a lot of people who are maybe growing in character, they're becoming nicer and more joyful and more peaceful and more loving. And there are many Christians that are really good, loving people but are they investing in his kingdom? Are they bearing the fruit in other people's lives? You know, one of, one of my favorite things, and, and this probably shouldn't be one of my favorite things, but, but I love it that um, my father pastored this church for 15 years. And I love it then when, that when people, I hate, I don't love it when people pass away, but I love it that when people pass away, they loved my father so much and he made such an impact on their life that they would like him to come back and do their funeral, not me. And most people think that would hurt my feelings. I love that. I love it that my father has given his life to serve others and it's made a difference in their lives. And you know what? That's what I want to do. I don't care about being a great preacher. I would like to be effective in preaching God's word to you, but I don't care about being known as a great preacher or not. I want to see God work. I want to see God move. I want to see fruit produced. That's what matters. It doesn't matter to me what you think of me. I mean, it's hard to not let it matter to me, but it doesn't matter. I want to see God move. I want to see people come to know him through us. I want to see no zeros. I want to see the roof blown off, not literally. <laughs> I want to see God do incredible things. 
And I'm thankful that I get to be a part of it. See, there are churches that are really nice churches that have good character. They're nice to people. They love people. They're, they're peaceful. There are lots of really peaceful churches that report zeros every year because nobody's coming to know Jesus through the ministry. And, and listen, I'm not, I, don't, I don't mean to be hateful or, or judgmental, but God's plan is not for his church to be spectators. God's plan is not for his church just to be a bunch of nice people gathered in a room each week. God's plan is not even for, for the church just to be a place that people come in and say, wow, they're, they're really loving people. God's plan is for his church to build the kingdom. That, that the fruit that's produced would then be invested in the kingdom and that others would come to know him. Other people should come to know Jesus through God's work in your life. It's great that you're growing in character. You should. It's great that you're growing in love. You should. But you'd better be investing in others. The only fruit that lasts is fruit that is fully surrendered for his purposes. It looks different on the screen. It says that gives of itself. The only fruit that lasts is fruit that is completely surrendered for his purposes. See, it's great when our character grows, but if our character grows and we don't give it all to him and invest it in his kingdom, guess what happens? We start to be arrogant. We start to be prideful. It's great when, you know, it's great when we grow in our love and we become a loving church and, and that's a great thing. It's great when we grow in morality and we behave the right way and we do the right things. But guess what? If they're not invested in his kingdom, if they're not for his glory, guess what happens? We start to think we're better than everyone else. That's not his plan. See, the fruit that comes through the connection with the vine is meant to be surrendered. Jesus says, love others as I have loved you. Last week, we made a list of all the ways that Jesus loves us. One, if I could boil it down to one thing, it would be this. Jesus was all in. Jesus was all in for the kingdom. We took communion. He gave his body and his blood he literally gave his life to build the kingdom for the Father's glory for us. It, he didn't just give, you know, his Sabbath time. He didn't just give, you know, his learning. He gave everything. And the difference between churches that are reporting zeros and that are nice little churches that are peaceful and comfortable, the difference between those and churches that are on fire is churches that are on fire are churches that are filled with people that are completely surrendered to God's will, to building God's kingdom. No zeros. That's the difference. And I don't know about you, but I want to be on fire. Yeah. We just sang the song, Jesus gave it all, all to, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. I hope you know that today, that we owe everything to him. Even the good fruit that's produced is meant to be invested in John chapter 12. Jesus says, the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified. And very truly, I tell you, listen to what he says. Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. What Jesus is saying is, it's great if you have good character. It's great if you have love, but if, if that's all you have, if it's about you, it ends. And you're going to look back someday and say, that was the good old days. Jesus says, if you surrender it all, if you're willing to die to self, even the good parts of you, if you're willing to give them for his kingdom, he will be glorified and we will be lifted up and we will see the kingdom grow. Do you get the picture? Do you get what Jesus is trying to say to his disciples? He's getting ready to leave them. He says, the most important thing is that you stay connected. Stay connected. In chapter 14, Jesus said, I'm going to be leaving you, but I'm going to send you my Holy Spirit. 
And so sometimes I think we get jealous of the disciples because they could literally walk next to Jesus. I've got good news for you. If you're a follower of Christ, you have been given his spirit. The very spirit of God, of Jesus, lives in you as if he's walking right here with you and can speak to you today, can lead you today. Jesus says, stay connected. Grow in your character. Grow in love and invest. Give it all. Be all in for his kingdom. As you grow to love like Jesus, others will come to know him and follow him if we are all in. So so let me just stop and let me ask you a question. I'll ask it one more time. Does your faith matter to anybody other than yourself? Does your faith matter? Not just for you to, be in, to get a ticket to heaven, but is God taking the fruit that's being produced? Are you surrendering it to him? Are you using it for his kingdom? And are you seeing the fruit in other people's lives? No zeros is... Uh, I I know it seems like this is about our church. I want you to know No Zeros is about my heart. This series came up not because I was worried about a church. It was because I was worried about my heart. I don't ever want a year to go by that I haven't been all in for his kingdom and that I haven't invested everything I have in others. No Zeros. Are you all in? Does your faith matter? Listen, I have no interest in playing church. I have no interest in just being a nice church. I have no interest in just being a loving church. I want to be completely surrendered for his purposes. And I want to see the world be changed through the fruit that God produces in us. The worship team is going to come up. And I just want to invite you today to respond to God's word as we sing. There's a few different ways you can respond. Maybe some of you here would say that you maybe have been living in a servant relationship, or maybe you don't even know who Jesus is, and and, and this is just new to you. Listen, I want to invite you. I think God wants to invite you today into a relationship with him. Not a servanthood, a relationship to know him deeper, to walk with him. Maybe there's some of you here today that, You've been spectating a little bit. You've been watching what everyone else is doing. And you haven't been all in. Listen, today the only appropriate response is complete surrender. Whether you've been a Christian 70 years or whether you're not a Christian, complete surrender to his will and his kingdom. And we're going to sing a song that says, burn like a fire in me. My prayer for our church is that we would burn like a fire. Not that everyone would say, man, that's the coolest church or they've really got good things. Listen, I want to see God move. I want to see his spirit move and I want to see people come to know him through us. Father, I pray that you would light a fire in us today. I pray, Lord, that if there's anyone here that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, I pray right now that they would just surrender to you. Lord, if there's anyone here that that's just been walking around without purpose and without life, I pray that you would invite them right now into a deep relationship with you, that they would know that they're loved, that they would know that they're chosen. And if there's anyone in here right now, Lord, that would just say, I I wanna be in that relationship, I pray right now we would just surrender and say, Lord, I confess that I've been living for myself, but today I wanna surrender. I want you to forgive me of my sins and my selfishness, and I wanna live for you. Lord, save us. And Lord, if there's any today that maybe have been, you know, a spectator, or maybe we've been halfway in, maybe we've been enjoying being a little bit nicer or or growing a little bit here or there, Lord, I pray if there's anyone that's not completely surrendered to you, I pray that we would give it all to you now. Help each and every one of us to be on fire for your kingdom. Light a fire in us, Lord. Help us to live for you today that when we go from this place, that fire would spread, Lord. I pray that you would work through us, not just bring fruit in us, but bring fruit through us, Lord, and build your kingdom through us. We love you, Lord. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.